Good morning, good morning, all. Morning, sir. So recently, I was cleaning my cupboard, and uh, I found a folder which basically consists my certificate, starting from my school to the very end of engineering. And uh, so I started organizing the certificates, you know, going through the memory lane. And uh, the very first certificate was from my grade six, and it was basically a certificate from Helpage India, which was with you know, uh, bestowed because there was a task given by Help Page India to collect donations from your neighborhood and there was prize of bronze, silver and gold. And I uh, won the bronze, uh, bronze one uh, because I collected a donation of rupees 75 and it was in 2006. And 75 was a significant amount, a little bit. So that was my first uh, achievement uh, to, be, uh, to be said. Fast forward. Uh, I was pretty good at uh, essay writing in school and uh, in fact uh, my last achievement in essay was a national, achieve, uh, national award. So seeing that, my teacher said he's pretty good at uh, writing so we can send him to you know, uh, debate and elocution so he can also speak well. So my first debate was in class 9 where I spoke for 3 seconds, fumbled for three, 30 seconds and stood still for shivering for three minutes and after that uh, one of the jury said all the best better luck for next time you can take your seat and among the jury one uh, one person was one of my uncle so again a big embarrassment fast forward to class 11th and uh, there was a uh, i was in a different school uh, different school and there was a debate competition going on and i just thought give a thought my life i have, I have written well and uh, I speak well, then why did I, you know, fail during my first debate? So let me participate once again and see if I'm able to, you know, have, if I've overcome my earlier failure. So I participated, participated just out of curiosity and uh, luckily, you know, I stood first in one and second in the other. Okay, so till here, everything was good. This is a little bit of failure, a little bit of success. Class 12th. And that's a time when you have to, that's the first time when you are cut off from all the curricular activities and you, are, you have to only study. Trust me, that's, that's what the simple thing you have to do is just study and forget everything else. And that's where I failed miserably. For me, towards the end of my 12th was one of the most, I would rather say the most uh, downside in my career. And just three, four months before exam, the teachers who used to support me a lot, who used to praise me a lot, they called my parents and said, we can't teach him because we are scared if you teach, he fails and it will be embarrassing for us. We don't want to spoil our name, so you can take your care, children and teach him in, at home and bring him to uh, give the exam. Back then, this word depression, failure, all this, this they, these were not celebrated or these were not taken care of, the awareness was not there. I didn't knew that what I was going through was called something called as depression. So I was in a depression for uh, two to three months. It was a you know, huge mental breakdown. Didn't know what to do. I was just sitting silently and you know, near, near a pond and a pretty old man in his 80s, he uh, approached me and he said, Tindu, you seem to be a bit stressed out. What happened? And somehow I just narrated the entire thing to him. He told, okay, don't worry, I'll take care of you. And for the next three months, he counseled me. A stranger, complete stranger, is counseling a person who was in complete depression and almost going to succumb to his depression. Fast forward three months, I passed with pretty good marks in my 12th. Obviously, India, after 12th year, if you have taken science, you have either medical or engineering. I joined engineering because my father is an engineer, so I joined engineering and uh, the curiosity, ingenuity, everything again kicked off. The butterfly started flying once again because, you know, a lot of things like just imagine you were put on a, inside a cage for a couple of months or a year and all of a sudden you are seeing an entire new world. So I just, out of curiosity, I joined the space club and in next two months they said you prepare a, a, a you know, project and you can go to IIT Kharagpur and you know. In my 12th, 11th and 12th and in school, I used to put crazy questions to my teachers all on space and space debris. But the, the, you know, there's a phenomenon called space debris. All these rockets and satellites that go to space the, the leftover parts are there, still lurking around, and they create a huge problem. International Space Station changes its course every year to a price or twice just to avoid a collision with any space station. They start range from 0.1 mm to huge satellites and rockets, rocket uh, parts. 
So I was you know, crazily working on a space debris management system. I didn't knew its feasibility. I was just working out, working out. And it was just a project. And I said, I thought, let me pre present it to at IIT Kharagpur. And I did that. As a CBC students, we are good at you know project making. We, we make pretty good projects. So we know how to do a project. I just prepared a project present over there. So here comes the thing. We might be excelling, we are special in something or the other, right? We might be a good painter, good in studies, good in sports, something or the other. Once we are good at something, we think that we are the king of this. A frog in a well, if you ask a frog inside a well what's the world for you, it will tell that this particular well is the world. But when you take it out of that well, it will be surprised. That's a, again, bigger, larger world existing. That's not a, the frog is not aware of it. Same thing, when you go out of your comfort zone, that is where the real life begins. Because that is where you see the reality of the world. What's happening, so much is happening, uh, you know, outside of your known zone. And that fascinated me somehow, ignited me somehow. I was reading Dr. Kalam's book, Ignited Mind, and I would also suggest you as a children to read Dr. A.P.J. Kalam's Ignited Mind, one of the book, which motivated me during my school days. After that, I participated in a competition uh, organized uh, the, in that very IIT Kharagpur. I came across a company which was organizing India's first balloon satellite competition where you have to create a satellite, nano satellite, launch it through a weather balloon to stratosphere, do a couple of experiments, get it back. So there were a lot of criteria. I was just three months to my engineering, knowing nothing about technology, communi communication, electronics, coding, nothing, almost nil. And I just somehow enrolled in it. My next challenge was, after enrolling, I need to have a team of 10, and I need to have a project report, which was not non-existing. And I was nothing, knowing nothing, literally. I had a couple of weeks to work out. I approached the space club. I approached multiple people, seniors, juniors, faculties. No, no avail, no help. But still, somewhere I was fighting. I was fighting, fighting. And it was the very last day, the very last day of the submission of the report and the team list. I was still pushing around, and it was in the evening. I just came across a senior through some com uh, connects, and after a, near about a month of waiting around the bush, I found him and he said, he listened, he understood, and he said, yeah, this can be worked out pretty easily. We can do that. It'll take some time, we can do that. So the very last day, at the very last moment, that is till uh, he made some contacts, calls and all, by within next one hour, two hour, by evening, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, we had a team of 10 people. I was the only one from first year, rest everyone from second year, third year, fourth year, final year, all seniors. And they were pretty well known in their own field. Someone was very well known in the, in the university as a coder. In electronics, someone was known in robotics, and we all came together at the very last moment. Not giving up, having that curiosity, taking up the challenge without knowing anything about it, and then not giving up on that thing, we got selected. Our report stood fifth in all across India. So we, we stood fifth. Now the next challenge is to make a satellite. Everything happened on paper, pen and paper. The next challenge was to actually make a satellite. We bootstrap. Now here comes the thing. In a startup, this thing called as bootstrapping. What is bootstrapping? So basically, bootstrapping is utilizing your own resources. It may be funds, it may be human resources, it may be anything. Utilizing your own resources and running your business. One example is Zeroda, a unicorn in India, a company, a startup, which has become a unicorn without any external funding. So that's a bootstrap startup becoming a unicorn. So a bootstrap is something which you are utilizing your own resources or funds without getting any external funding. It may be angel investment or venture capital investment, which I'll come later. So we were bootstrapping, but in a research project like to the, uh, like a satellite, you need a larger amount for research and making it. And literally, we were uh, out of our bootstrap uh, funds, and our college was university was not ready to fund it because it was out of the beyond, uh, you know, out of the scope. They said and multiple things. We still tried. It's almost going to be one year. Review is happening. We are still on the same uh, position, but we are unable to complete the satellite. The team has almost given up after after struggling and trying to do it for one year. They have almost given up. It was 2014 summer vacation. 
So what we usually do, we go home and we enjoy the summer vacation. It's pretty hot here, who would like to say? And I was staying in the hostel. So out of, after the comfort zone of home and in uh, vacations, even the canteens are closed. So I stood in the summer vacation because that was the last hope I had, we had. I s alone stood in the entire hostel and I started searching people on Facebook. Back then, Facebook was one of the only sources we had. I, I found a couple of people having, uh, you know, uh, designation as CEOs, co-founders of XYZ companies and I started approaching them and one of them responded. He said, I told him and he said, okay, come and meet me. I traveled all the way and uh, met him and he said, okay, no problem. I'll, uh, this Sunday, I'll make you meet with a couple of other people who might be interested. The Sunday, there was a startup meetup happening. I was a student of first year. Uh, first year. I went with a, just a A4 size paper asking for a sponsorship. I didn't know exactly what sponsorship is. I just took a one page synopsis, showed them. And they were, they were pretty like, who's this crazy guy who's like, looking like a kid and coming here with the A4 size paper asking for funding for, to make a satellite? Is it real? I'm still connected with a uh, couple of people from that first meetup and they said, even today they say this, you came like a kid and you were saying so much, so many things. We literally became like, what is he saying? Is it even real? So that thing, and of course I didn't get any funding because not really the paper was not enough. Uh, you need to have a proper uh, paperwork for getting sponsorship and other things. But you know, that going around people and meeting and sharing that paper and I, how foolish I was, I made a synopsis without giving my contact details. So very influential person sent me a friend request on Facebook after a couple of days. I had already given hope, given up on the hope. And I saw that he was pretty influential person. I have seen him on TV and I said, this might be a fake profile, I think. But out of curiosity, I just went and saw that. I saw that's a genuine profile. So I just accepted it and he, said, he shared a text. I got your paper and I read about it. Why don't you come and meet and let's discuss in brief. I said, okay, I'll, I'm not in English, I'll go and meet. I met him and he said this, what you're doing, he understood. And he said, see, we are a 15 odd year old company and we are doing a lot of things. But we don't have a technological aspect. We want to have a technological aspect. Why don't you convert this as a startup and we are ready to invest in you? A person just have entered my second year of engineering without knowing anything, the S of startups. And back then the startup world, entrepreneurship startup was pretty new growing up in India. This very thing of mine, which is just, you know, following the intuition. And if the intuition says yes, then I go towards any way, you know? So I said yes, without doing anything, and went for it. So it was December 19, 2014, when I first uh, started that Aidlon Innovations Private Limited got incorporated. And January 5th, we launched our first startup, Aidlon Innovations. January 5th is the date we launched, 2015. A boy of second year engineering, you know, just passed out of his school, starting a startup. And back, back then, without any awareness, it was a big deal. And Somehow, I had to hide it from my parents. So I had my limited budget, limited pocket, and I have to do it, everything by, within that budget. But kept going, and uh, we were working in the field of aviation and aerospace, uh, UAVs and all, unmanned, unmanned aerial vehicle. But back then, things were a bit different. There was a lot of restriction, uh, red tape, and a lot of, uh, you know, uh, even if you get, used to import any component, it used to get stuck in the, uh, customs because they were not legal to get get in India. A, a communication device you can't get into India. So anyway, after struggling for a year, we thought let's pivot. Every startup, almost almost every startup in its lifetime does a pivot. Now the thing is, we did a pivot. We, uh, that time there was a German company called uh, and they have just started an Indian division, the second largest R and D manufacturing in India. We collaborated with them and we ventured into something called as automation. Uh, the term was Dali digitally addressable lighting interface. So it was basically an automation system where we were closely working with the German company. Worked in the startup for five, over five years. And in 2020, January, I finally said, I need to have some rest and I need to think about life, what next? So I took an exit of my, from my first startup back in 2020, January, uh, 2020 February, I went on a India tour and travel hitchhiked. Hitchhiking means you travel by any means. It might be train, bus, truck, or plane. Hitchhike for five, six cities in India, Gujarat, Hyderabad, and uh, much many more. Came back home, 
with the thing that now it's time I can start my second phase. And then COVID happened, and this is where things changed basically. I took a sabbatical after so many years. I took a sabbatical, and for almost a year, I stood in my home, in my room, without going anywhere. I just started con contemplating what went wrong, what I did mistakes, and started thinking about it. Trust me, when you have confusion or dilemma in life, you go to people and they give you solutions. Basically, they are not solutions. They are an improvised version of your problem statement. They are not solutions. Because one problem gives rise to another problem statement. What I realized was, when you sit with yourself, you meditate on that particular problem, you ask that problem to yourself, live with that problem, some, somewhere the universe conspires and gives you a solution to you. So that is what happened. And with all those living with that uh, problem statement, and getting all the clarity, very recently um, I started my second, uh, launched a uh, second startup that is Halton Miss Private Limited. And very recent, four months ago, we launched Asava as a brand. So the journey which I narrated overall here was from the school, the first achievement being a 75 rupees donation to Help H India, to coming all the way, starting a startup in second year and failing early, learning early. So this was basically to give you a perspective. Whatever it happens, do not give up. One thing which kept me going was this attitude of not giving up. So, of course, the last I will just say, keep, keep going, keep hustling. And if there's an intuition, if there's a butterfly for something, a vision, go for it, no matter what. If you do not succeed, at least you learn. And that learning will take you to somewhere else. So the reason of saying your essay, debate, and everything, because one learning gave rise to another learning. So that's all. One last, I would like to show you something. Fail early, learn fast, stay curious and hungry. Hungry is not the belly hungry. Hungry is the way, uh, you know, dream hungry. Life, discipline, value, time, and stay humble. Humility is the key which will take you to places. So that's all. I'd like to conclude with one thing. There's a very famous poem or saying, se pehle se lada hon, main apne umre se kai saal bada Wish you all the best. This is the signing Thank you.